when we think about Lowell Observatory, the story of course starts with Percival Lowell. Are we going to be more of a museum and move more in that direction? We want to continue to be what Percival Lowell set out to build. Or really retain our position as a leading center of astronomical research. We're living in a golden age of astronomy and of science research. We're making these discoveries now. What are we going to be looking back and celebrating in another 125 years? We have quite a story to talk about. I think it's important for humans to know about where we are, why we're here, and also uh, reap the benefits of scientific research that will make life on Earth much better. Our mission is to educate and inspire everyone about the marvels of the cosmos. We want to perform that mission like we do our research at the very highest level. I like to think of Lowell Observatory as America's observatory for its incredible history and its very high reputation of doing really fine science and intellectually being very pure in its uh, desire and its drive to collect data and make science. Lowell is a unique institution. Um, in terms of its structure, its independence, the complete academic freedom that we try to afford our faculty, the freedom to pursue wherever their curiosity takes them. There's no other institution like this that also welcomes huge numbers of people right up to the observatory almost every night to see the sky right adjacent to a city in Arizona. When we think about Lowell Observatory, the story of course starts with Percival Lowell. The earliest memory he had in his life was his mother waking him up uh, when he was about three years old to see the Comet Dante and he remembered looking up the staircase as they were going out on the roof and seeing the comet frame through the doorway. His astronomy was mostly self-taught. He was a gentleman astronomer who wasn't a professional scientist per se, um, but he had an interest and he had money to support his interest. We were founded out of the private sector, you know, at the very end of the 19th century, at a time when private philanthropists were making major contributions to fundamental institutions of science and vaulted the United States into a leading position in astronomical research and discovery. Percival's belief in how science should be done is what formed the mission and our culture here at Lowell. As soon as the observatory was set up, I mean the main focus was doing scientific research. He hired some really bright, dedicated people like VM Slifer. And under Lowell's tutelage, Slifer began searching and studying these distant bodies called spiral nebulae, we know today as galaxies. And based on that direction that Lowell gave Slifer, Slifer detected the first evidence of the expanding nature of the universe. Another person that wasn't on Lowell's staff per se, but came to Lowell to do research was Vera Rubin. Vera Rubin and Ken Ford, in using the Carnegie image tube attached to the Perkins telescope, and they also attached it to a telescope at Kapik, they discovered what we know today as dark matter. And for years, that was kind of a small footnote in astronomy, because astronomers didn't know what to think of it. And in some ways, they still don't know quite how to characterize it. We think of the history of Lowell Observatory as this history of important discoveries. Percival Lowell set the stage for this, and we look back at these great discoveries that have been made here that have fundamentally changed our concept of the universe. And of course today astronomers, including our own here at Lowell, are discovering planets around other stars. But when we think about the traditional nine planets, of the three that have been quote unquote discovered, one was discovered not just in the United States, not just in Arizona, but right here at Lowell Observatory. Percival is fortunate that he had four trustees before me and presumably many more to come who have kept the institution alive and viable and growing. Leadership of Lowell has been really adamant that we don't turn into some ivory tower place on the side of the hill looking down on everybody else. We're part of the Flagstaff community. And I think that's another important reason why people appreciate the observatory because it's very accessible. 
It wasn't too long after opening, the observatory staff started putting notices in the local paper, come on up to Lowell Observatory and take a look through the telescope. While he popularized astronomy in a lot of ways and brought attention to it, he also didn't make that big discovery that he was hoping to do. Setting up Lowell Observatory, that was the first step in really developing Flagstaff as a scientific community. Development that we've seen here over the last 40 years has in a sense been stimulated from outside. And so one of the first things we decided after I became a director is that we should embark to build a new visitor center. And the goal was to open that facility on the centenary day. When Bill Putnam came, said you gotta have a public program, and we thought we can't possibly build a building to do that, we don't have any money. We began to fundraise in the private sector, whereas previously we had depended almost exclusively on federal grants and contracts. It's very natural, I think, that we should rely on private sector support and really think about our research as a partnership with the public. It's one of the reasons we are so deeply committed to bringing the results of that research back to the public through our current outreach programs and through our planned expansion. The question naturally came up, well, what does Lowell Observatory want to be, aspire to be in its second century? Are we going to be more of a museum and move more in that direction or really retain our position as a leading center of astronomical research. That was becoming a tougher and tougher thing to do as time went by because many new uh, larger telescopes were being constructed. Technology as applied to astronomy was exploding and becoming ever more expensive. Should we just become a public astronomical center? In other words, an educational facility. And at the end of the day, everybody concluded, no, we want to continue to be what Percival Lowell set out to build. We want to be a research observatory equipped to play in the big leagues. And so that's what we set out to do. And so when we talk about 125 years, it's exciting to think this is what we've done up till now. What's it going to look like down the road? We've got one of the world's most powerful telescopes, the Lowell Discovery Telescope. I guess the thing that gives me the greatest pride when I visit this telescope and when I have had the opportunity to be out here when the telescope is being used is to realize that we did in fact build a world-class telescope. Failures of major telescopes happen not infrequently, but it was never an option that this not succeed. It was too big a bite. This telescope points with uncommon accuracy. So at the end of the day, the observatory delivered what was promised. The LDT really gives Lowell a unique forward power of current research at the highest level for the future, such that all those elements now at Lowell are represented. Current research, history, the amazing stories of Mars and Pluto, Everything that you can imagine with a four meter telescope, including uh, looking into things like dark matter and dark energy and the greatest mysteries that we have at this moment. So that adds an enormous dimension and power to the future for Lowell, uh, which maybe a generation ago was a wish, but now it exists in reality. I see a real golden era. You know, we have a four meter class telescope that we own solely. Four meters is not a giant aperture by the standards of the largest ground-based telescopes these days, but it's pretty unusual for a single institution to have sole ownership of one. It enables the kinds of long-term, ongoing programs that you really can't do anywhere else. And both we and our partners take advantage of the particular capabilities of LDT to let us do that. I mean, there's no way you could possibly make up the things that we see with telescopes. 
There's fantastic things out there. It's better than fiction. What's really exciting is what's the next 125 years going to bring? What things are our astronomers doing right now that we're going to be celebrating down the road? We're getting close to the answers to those big questions about how the universe began, where it's going, how life on Earth got going, what will happen ultimately to us on this planet. The whole big picture of the cosmos is coming together and it's coming together because of people uh, like the astronomers at Lowell Observatory. People want to escape the, the dreary drumbeat of the daily news and think about something that's a little bigger than ourselves and a little bit more inspiring. We went from this big bang where there was nothing but some atoms and dark matter to people sitting around eating with friends. I mean, what a journey that is. <laughs> it's a very big universe and there's a lot to do out there. I used to tell members of the staff that you don't, you don't work for Lowell Observatory. You are the Lowell Observatory.